Hello and welcome to our channel, Universal Heritage Television Niger. My name is Afam Echi, your host. We are glad to have you back again on our breakfast show, Daybreak Niger. And today we are going to host Bishop Dr. Dennis Jacobs, Ambassador JP. He is the chairman of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Imo State Chapter. He is also the Bishop of Faith World Cathedral, Owere, Imo State. He is going to take us through some of the contemporary issues happening in the church and the society. Bishop Jacob, you are welcome to our program. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Please remember to give up thumbs up for our programs. And if you are joining us for the first time, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube platform. My name again is Afam 80. Sir, how long have you functioned as uh, the chairman of uh, Imo State PFN? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have functioned uh, at least two years now. Okay. Yeah. So what is, it, what is your tenor supposed to be? Uh, a tenor supposed to run four years. Okay. And uh, we have done two years precisely. So you've done just 50% of the time? Yes. Okay. So looking back, how has it been in terms of leadership, in terms of achievements, in terms of the challenges and um, I, I do remember that some time ago, not too long, your organization was uh, embroiled in a kind of leadership uh, crisis, you know. There were leadership tussles. We are no longer hearing that. So, uh, you know, reflecting on what I've just said. So, what, how has it been? Well, uh, we believe that God sent us at this time to do what he needs to do in the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. He sent us, and because he sent us, the sign is everywhere. And the one sign is a sign of peace. That is a serenity, that is peace, that is love, that is growth. A lot of good things have started happening to Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Imo State. We cannot say that we don't have challenges. The problems are to be solved. Man has only one agenda, and that is to solve problems. And so is leadership. Every leadership is called to solve problems, to bring solutions, to change the narratives, to move things from the level where they are to the next level. And I think that by the grace of God and message of God, that is what God has exactly done with our few years, two years in office as a chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so people talk about body of Christ and um, it seems to draw some kind of controversy. You know, do we really, can we really say we, we have, we still have one body of Christ when the Christian religion is denominated along different groups, churches, you have the Pentecostals, which is your group. You have the spiritual churches. You have the Orthodox churches. We talk about the Anglican, the Methodist, and the, the, the Catholic. And then uh, there were some churches that we have found led by, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Africans. You know, uh, you know your groupings, and all of you come under can. You know, so, so when there are different doctrinal practices. You know, do we still say we have one body of Christ? All when um, these groups still anchor their teachings and their preachings on Christ and the Bible, but they are doing different things. You get my question, sir? Yes. Okay. I, I want to quickly start by saying uh, this. Jesus said, I will build my church. The gates of hell will never, can never, shall never overcome the church. Now, take it this way. There is this church that is built by the Lord himself. And there is this church that man builds. You know, there is this God that created man. And there is this God man created. So they are not the same thing. So the Holy Spirit of God is busy building the invisible 
spiritual house, church of God, which is what we actually call the body of Christ. You can't attribute to Christ what is not his body. It's not possible. So all the other uh, religious activities, denominations, we attribute them as what? As human activities. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit uses this human activity to get the real body of Christ. So the body of Christ is not talking about one denomination or whichever way. The body of Christ is invisible. So that is why I hear the voice of a church inside the church because Jesus is still in the business of building his churches. Any man can start anything. Any man can begin anything. It doesn't matter. As long as it has a, is a denomination, it is humanly originated. It's just like the Tower of Babylon. They are building the tower. They are building, they are building, they are building. Until the day God said, let's go down and see what they are doing. Let's see what they are doing. A lot of people are doing their own thing. But one thing we should know that everything about doctrine is centered on a person. That person is Jesus Christ. That person is the Lamb of God. That person is the Son of God. Anything you are doing outside him, you are on your own. You know, the Bible said, we believe in Christ. Fine. And the devil also believes in Christ. But he trembles. So a lot of people are doing a lot of things in the name of the Lord. That is why on the day the Lord will begin to take stocks. To some people we said, depart from me. I don't know you. You worker of iniquity. And they will say, but you know, we did this in your name. Yeah. We did that in your name. He said, you are a worker. But you, what? you worked iniquity because the things you did was not under the instruction of my spirit. You are busy doing your own thing. I get it. Yeah. As a bishop of our cathedral, Faith World Cathedral, I am there as administrator to lead the church. So I can be doing whatever I want to do in the name of the Lord. But the day will come when the Lord will come and say, the things you did, did I ask you to do it? Okay, and sir. therefore, he discovered okay. that what we call the body of Christ so far is not the real body of Christ so far. Because the body of Christ is invisible. Only the Lord adds to those who will be part of the body. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, sir. So, in other words, you appear to be agreeing with those who hold the opinion that uh, the church or the Christian or religion is a human contrivance. People contrive so many things as it pleases them, and they get others to be convinced to follow them. Now, now like when I talked about doctrinal principles, you, you in your church, in your preaching, do not believe in Easter. You see Easter as a pagan festival, uh, in some way like Christ, Christmas, and other persons also do different things. So where is the point of convergence? You know, uh, when everybody is talking about Christ, talking about Jesus, and people are doing different things. I don't know if you get my question. Yes. Yeah, you don't believe in this. And then how do you now bring people together, the same people who are in the body of Christ, to agree on a common principle? Like you, that don't practice, you don't believe in Easter, you don't believe in Easter celebration and the Christmas celebration. We, we don't need to believe that what we call doctrine okay. and that what is called dogma. Okay. Doctrine is the word, the teaching of Christ. Christ. Okay. And dogma is what people make out, out of, of the, the doctrine. Bible. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Because the Bible says the scripture cannot be broken. I get it. Yeah. The problem people have is that at times they don't, they don't believe that God means what he says and says what he means. They try to interpret it and put it one, thing, one word or the other, the way it will suit them. But the word of God forever is settled in heaven. Jesus is the center of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the center of all that we're talking about. Christianity is not a religion. Like say, well, this idea, everything. No, it's not religion. It's a person. No, it's, I don't get to say Christianity is not a religion. It's not a religion because so, religion, let me explain to you. Yeah. Religion means men seeking God. Christianity means men have 
found God. Really? Yeah, finish. There's no truth about that. Okay. Very correct. Yeah. Religion. Men are still seeking God through one word or the other. But Christianity means men have found God through his son, Jesus Christ. What the Bible said, there is no other name given among men under heaven and in yes. heaven and from God. where men can be saved yes. than by the name of Jesus Christ. So anything I've been outside Jesus Christ, you're your own. I don't care what you believe. I don't care the religion you practice. I don't care your opinion. I stand with the scripture. It cannot be broken. Yeah, yeah so I, I, based on what you've just said, what about people who have never heard of Christ? They came from a, they come from different backgrounds. That uh, it's not uh, Christianity. You know, they practice different things, and they're all reaching out to God. So, are they also still bound by what you just said? No, you can't. There's no other way you can reach to God if not through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say that. That is why. Jesus, after his death mm. and resurrection and ascension, mm. he told the disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to those people we are talking about who have not met Jesus. That is why we are, we are here. We are doing, our duty is what? To take the church to them, to go to where they are, to go to the street. The, the Lord told us how to get it done because he said, There are other sheep. That I have that is of this fold that are not here. I say, go and bring them. So that is why it's so talking about evangelism, soul winning. We have to go to preach the gospel. God does not, since you understand that, there's no other name. Okay. I'm and the Bible said, idea. excuse me, Bible said that the gospel, that's Romans 1 16, that gospel is the power of God to salvation. Nobody is saved. I don't care the religion you belong to, even those who are traditionalists. Unless they believe in Jesus. If they don't believe in Jesus, that's their own, don't their own. Sir, let, let me come in at this point. Now, what, what is the position of our forefathers who never met Jesus and they have translated? And now, so how would they be held accountable for this thing you are talking about? Now, let me tell you something again. Yeah. In the book of Romans chapter 1, the Bible said, everything to be known about God is visible to everybody. Yeah. Nobody can say, I don't know God. Yeah, for people who, who, I'm coming. Before you, Christianity came. Yes, that's what I'm trying. That's the point I'm making. Okay. So, those people that are there before Christianity came, God was there. They okay. look at the sun, Good. they see the sun. Good. They look at the moon, they look at the tree. They, they, are, they, they have what is called conscience. That conscience is God that put it there for you to be able to know good and bad. So, you cannot tell us that that uh, because you are not there where Christianity came, therefore, you are you exempted. The Bible said, Whoever you may be, you have no excuse. So that, that, that is very interesting. In other words, we are affirming that traditional worship is right. In what I'm telling, I'm talking about there is a conscience. Yeah, inside people. I get it. Yeah. Inside people that tells there is God. Yeah. Abraham had the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Christ has not come. I get it. Jesus said before Abraham I was. What do you, how do you relate it? Before Abraham I was. So those people are talking about that were there before Jesus came. Jesus said I was there. You only manifested to die on the cross. But I've been there okay. to talk to you. Okay? So nobody has an excuse. And you know that Bible said when Jesus died, he went to hell and preached the gospel to all those men who have died before. So if you didn't hear it on earth, you hear it in hell. So nobody has an excuse not to receive Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Very interesting, sir. So I like, want to find out what was the relationship of Emo PFN? Uh, with, with the government, and uh, I know Imo PFN, I, I guess, is uh, under can because there are a lot of things that uh, you know, uh, you, you, are, you are members of the congregation, you are church members, and, and other members of the church are all citizens being governed by the government. So, I'm sure there should be a kind of uh, relationship, mutual relationship that should be beneficial to. Um... If I must speak on that, yes. let me correct one impression. Okay. That impression I had is said, uh, Pentecostal Fellowship is, is on that kind. No, Pentecostal Fellowship is not on that kind. Okay. Get it correct. Because okay. Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria is a member of Khan. Okay, it's a member of Khan. Yes, it's a not on that Khan. Not on that Khan. So in other words, it has a kind of uh, linear... Yes, so there's not... Because if you say on that Khan, it means that Khan mm -hmm. controls PF in everything they do. Mm -hmm. No, there is a, there's a constitution. Okay. It's an organization which we are part. Mm -hmm. So we cannot be under what we are part of. 
Okay. So I want to correct that impression. Okay. So let us get it correct. Okay. PFA yeah. is an entity, is a powerful entity on its own. I gave it yeah. take decision on their own, but there's a, 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 a place where a can point. Where people, people all the five blocks operate. Okay. We come to agree, we come to talk about it, not to say it's under because what, what do you mean by the five blocks? Five blocks that means can is made up of five blocks. Okay. Catholics, Anglicans, and other okay, people that like them. I tried to explain earlier. Yes, so okay. PFA, there are two. So we are there, we are five blocks. Even the world talk about the African traditional church, that is the OAIC, they are, yeah. they are there, everybody is there. So when we come, nobody is bigger than that person. It's the yeah. agreement, it's the brotherhood. Oh, okay. I gave it. So yeah. I cannot be under my brother who is in the one, same family, oh, we are yeah. members. Oh, so okay. that's number one. Then number two, you spoke about uh, government. Yes. The Bible said that government shall be upon his shoulder. Yeah. Okay? And then, uh, in, uh, before God, there's always government. Before God, that's okay. I mean, before, before the presence of God, there is government. Yeah. God, God, God instituted government. Government has two things to do for their people. Okay. Provision and security. The reason why we have government is to secure lives and properties. I gave it. Yeah. And then through the government, when it is good, mm. God will use it to bless a people, okay. to bless a state. Okay. In fact, government is for blessing of the people. Okay. That is when you have good government. Mm. You remember the Bible said when a righteous person is on the throne, is leading, so the people will rejoice. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so there's no other way. So I discovered that every government, the Bible said we should be loyal to every government. So we serve every government in power. We work with every government in power. We pray for the government. We do our duty from the pulpit. We talk to our people, teach our people good life, how to live a good life, how to live a peaceful life, how to live a drug-free life, how to live a life that will generate, that bless all the people. We become the voice of the masses. And we pray for our leader, that's our governor is now. We pray for him, even when whatever, whatever is happening, we are still praying for him, that God, because if anything happens to our governor, all of us will be in trouble. Mm -hmm. I get it. That's what Bible said, you should not speak evil of those who are your leaders, your government. So when I don't see us talk, we cannot talk about whatever is happening, whether good or bad. We cannot talk. Yeah, because yeah, but, but sir, is that uh, the right thing? Because uh, when we are not talking about the ills of government, that is why the evil multiply. And the people who are affected, it is your members who pay taxes to No, government. when we say we don't talk about it, it multiplies. Now, let me tell you something. Yeah. If anything you want to multiply, talk about it. Okay. Things multiply by talk. As we are talking about it, it's moving. For example, now, something may happen here in this office. Mm. If nobody talks about it, it will, die. it will die. But if once you live here and begin to say what happened, you are duplicating, you are multiplying. Mm. So if there's anything that's not good, that is why we needed to have a kind of uh, uh, relationship okay. with our government, with our governor, okay. so that we, when we see things are not working well, we start going to the media to talk about it or go to the press. We now reach our governor, say, look, 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 this is our advice, this is our submission. We cannot go to our pulpit, it's not that when we go to the pulpit, we can blow it up there. But they say, no, 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 it's not going to move the government forward. So but because we have a relationship yeah. with our governor, or the those in government, we call it, those in government are human beings, they are not, they are not spirits. They make mistakes because wherever there's human leadership, there is zero, one era or the other. So it is for us that are here now, we become the custodians of people's opinion. opinion. So when something happens, we call the governor. He says, Who is that? My name is Bishop Jacobs. I'm PFA chairman in the state. Can I see you? Can I talk to you? Because leaders must be talked to. Yes. I give it. Yes. So, no, that, and there's no mistake that is too old to be corrected. So when we get, that, get it that way, that is it. But when we don't assess the people are supposed to assess, they will not begin to listen to what people are saying. And it's not good for anything. As I am the, the PFA chairman, there are things people may see that we're not getting right. We will prefer to come to our secretary or come to the chairman and relate to him. And then the mistake will be corrected. 
But if they cannot reach me, if I make myself incommunicable, that is that uh, nobody can reach me. Yeah. They will now begin to talk about it. it. And by the time they are talking about it, I'll be hearing from outside. And when I hear about it, I will not write to them and say that. 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 Why are they talking like that? Why are they talking like that? They are talking like that because things are like that. Yeah. And they are talking like that because they cannot reach me. Or they have reached me. I don't want to listen. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. So our relationship with government is always cordial. We have no favorite uh, person. As long as God will put you there presently, we will serve with you. It's okay, sir. Thank you. It's okay. Okay, sir. Another thing is, uh, how will you situate the role of uh, prophecy in governance? In the olden times, like uh, you were quoting the Bible, the prophets of old uh, used to prophesy to the kings, mm. and they would listen and take precautionary actions. But these days, uh, we hear uh, prophets talk to our leaders. I know of a particular prophet, I don't want to mention his name. Mm -hmm. He is always advising the government on national and even international issues for warning about impending dangerous calamities. But nobody listens and these things uh, keep occurring. You know, sometimes I used to wonder if the people in leadership listen, some of these things could be prevented. I interact with some of uh, some prophets, you know, and this time I publish some of them. And uh, it's very sad that some of the things they talk about which the government should have gone ahead to prevent happen and we are all the worst for it. Um, in the issue of uh, prophecy in government, yes. you know, we are living in a time when a lot of people uh, say, thus says the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord did not say nothing. They are prophesying for their, for their belly. Okay, <laughs> and then I, I knew there was a time some prophet prophesied to somebody, say, you are going to be the next governor of Imo State. I gave it. Mm -hmm. They even anointed him, say, you are the next governor of Imo State. He couldn't believe it that before the, the man died. <laughs> so, you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the thing we are trying to uh, discourage you say certain things so that people will think that you're a mighty prophet mm -hmm. God is using you prophets of old they don't go for just aggrandizement just to show off mm -hmm. I get it mm -hmm. and the ministry have changed the old prophets and this time they are no more the same mm -hmm. I get it this information there was a time this king in Israel, they call him King Ahab. Okay. He wanted to go to war. He wanted to take a project. He wanted to take a decision over certain matters. There's a particular land he wanted to reclaim mm. from their enemy. Okay. And then he said, okay, call me all my prophets. Because that time they have prophets in the palace. Like that of Daniel. Prophets are there. And these are prophets of no repute, have no dissent. When all these people gathered together, the king asked a question. He said, Shall I go to Jebe Gilead to reclaim the land or not? There were about hundreds of prophets, and among them, the chief prophet. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then this prophet, all of the prophets were saying the same thing. Okay, go, you will succeed. Okay, go, you will succeed. At the end of the day, all of them said the same thing. Who was a friend to the king mm. was listening to them. After all the prophecies left and right front and back, he asked the king, have the prophet finished? Is there no prophet of God? The king said, there is one prophet of God, his name is Micah. He doesn't say something good to me, he's always saying opposite. Mm. He said, go and bring him, want to hear him. By the time they brought Micah, the person that went to bring him said to him, listen, this is what everybody has said in the government house. They have spoken to the governor. They have spoken to the national of now. They are telling this man, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. If you go there, don't spoil business for us. Say what we say. Mm. You see what I'm talking about? Mm. They want to compromise him. I give him. They compromise him. But when Micah came before the king, he repeated what others said. The king said, no, Micah, that's not you. I never see you line up with other prophets. There is something, something is wrong somewhere. And Micah said, oh, king, governor, do you want to hear the truth? He said, yes. 
I see Israel scatter as you go to war, and you will not come back. Mm. Which governor, which president, sitting president, sitting governor, will like that type of prophecy? Okay, it's like uh, uh, maybe uh, prophecy doesn't seem to have much relevance in governance today, like it used to be in the time past. Because they don't know who to believe again. Okay. You see, they've got the government as they're prophesying for their belly. They're prophesying for anything they can get. They are not more. They don't even. They don't even have the word of God. The Lord said, "Let him that has dream share his dream. Okay. Let that have the word of God. Speak the word of God." I give you it. Yeah. Ah, you, you can go like that, like Nathan went to David to the king. He said, "You are the man." Face to face, he said, thou are the man. He was speaking to him in love. But this time around, we have a lot of uh, both minor and major misled people that call themselves prophets. prophets. They yeah. go for to tell the people, the what? politicians, what, what they want to hear so that they will get what they want to get. <laughs> I give it. So now I don't know the real from Jenny, but yeah. nevertheless, there are prophets of God when they say, Thor says the Lord, Thor says the Lord. They don't compromise. Not because of anything. They are still prophets <laughs> in the body of Christ. Uh, so, uh, uh, looking at, uh, I don't know whether you have noticed that there is a growing interest in tradition and culture. People are moving back to the root. It looks like uh, the church is losing, uh, people are losing interest in the church and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's like it's no longer serving the needs of people. Because today you see a lot of persons, young men, you know, going back to... I, what are your thoughts? I don't about? agree that. Okay. Nobody is going back to anything traditional. Because traditional has nothing to offer. You know, let me tell you something. When people talk about traditional, I laugh. I said, do you know, let me say it in Igbo, mm. that there is what is called Omenala. Mm -hmm. And that's what is called ordinala. Yes. Ordinala and the menala, they are not the same. Okay. Can you menala is man made. Good. Ordinala is the things God has kept there from generation to generation. Which is universal. That the Bible said, honor your father, honor your mother. Do you know that this life we live is spiritual and it has spiritual laws? If you break it, you pay for it. Correct. Whether you are a Christian or not a Christian, there are laws that are guiding us. So when you talk about people going back to tradition, to traditional distance, I don't believe so. More people are coming to Christ every day. <laughs> people are getting born again every day. So forget about what they post in social media. Maybe somebody just gets somebody and say, I'm talking about you. Quit, quit, your, quit your traditional distance. Are you going back to where they are killing twins? Destroying lives? I, well, so what, what, what are you talking about? Tradition has nothing to offer us. Yes, we are, we are born there. We are growing. We are not condemning it, but at the same time, it will be moderated. But not, like I said, the most important person we need now is Jesus Christ. Whether you are traditional or untraditional or orthodox, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you die, you go to hell. So I don't believe, sir, that uh, the people are going back. Going back from where? To where? Are yeah. you going back where there's no road? Say, I'm going back to Egypt. From where would you cross? There's no road. There's no road. Because, uh, and people say that Christianity is one man, white man's religion. It's not true. Yeah. It can never be. Jesus, man, Jesus who, who, is not that brought, Who brought Christianity if it's not a white man? Who brought? Who brought Christianity to us? No, white man did not bring Christianity to us. They brought, they brought business for us. Look at, look at, uh, look at something like uh, UK. Hmm. They, what did they bring for us? Okay. Eh? They brought, they brought, they, they took Bible and carried business put under it. So they came for business, they didn't come for, for religion. <laughs> I give it. God, God did this his, his own way. Okay? So Christianity is not white man's religion. It is God's way of life. Salvation. Yeah. So, and that we are standing on it. So no white man anything. You know, that are sometimes, let me tell you this thing. Some time ago, some years ago, I was in U.S., and uh, I told the white man, yeah. I said, God has left America. God is in Africa now. Because by looking at what is happening in your country, mm. as far as family is concerned, you carry your mama, you carry your papa, go put up for old house. But Africans, 
we still uphold those sanctities. We still uphold those values of marriage. Can you imagine man marrying man? Go to marry man, car to marry person. You see, I said, God, I've left. Oh. I said, God is in Africa now. If you want to see God, come to Africa. I went to UK. I saw a big body road. God is dead. God is dead. God is dead. I told you what, you see what I'm talking about. God is dead here, but God is alive in Africa. And if we believe that we brought Christianity to us, we are going to bring back that, the real thing to you people. We are coming. Africa will still preach to their white to get born again. And, 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 so, and uh, it appears that is the reason why um, the church is thriving here. We are at their place. They no longer believe in... They are not so obsessed like we are here. You know, you know, there's something you said very interesting. You said they didn't bring the religion. They came here, they brought business. They brought business. And hid it under the Bible. Yes. They used the Bible to, to trick us, back. to take our resources, right? Yes. Okay. And um, today now we have become more Christians than the whites. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. Mm. All these things, God is involved. Okay. And uh, everybody has his own time. Like I'm trying to explain, what I'm trying to say is that mm. there was a time for the white men. Okay. They were missionaries, bringing the word of God to us. Okay, mm -hmm. but now it is African time. Now we are taking the word of God back. Yeah, well, the African time. God is moving in Africa. That's why people say, if you come to Africa, the world, you, you have the biggest church in Africa. But Africans are more spiritual. So uh, don't, you see, don't you see the relationship? There's an inverse relationship. The more we talk about church, the more we talk about religion, the more underdeveloped we are. Whereas they, they are defocusing, they are not focusing more on church. They are focusing more on development and better life. And they are enjoying it. No. So, so how do you reconcile that? that? Is, see, because here we are building cathedrals, like I mean, your cathedral right yes. now. Very big one. Yes. And everybody, but they are building industries. Yes. And then how do you reconcile that? Don't you see some level of underdevelopment coming from? No. Because we no. focus so much let on... Me, let me put this thing. Yeah. The Bible said... What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? The Bible said again that all these things that are in the world, sooner or later, will be folded like mud and throw away. So what am I trying to say? People are majoring on the minor, are minoring on the major. Spiritual is all that matter. That's why Jesus came. Jesus did not come to build those houses. Jesus did not come to give us cars. I could not say it. Yes, sir. And the, if it is what Jesus came for, he would have built the biggest, largest cathedral in the whole world that everybody in the world will come there. But that's not what he come for. He come to save souls. He said, Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. So the other people are going to the other side. Life is, let me tell you something, man is made of three di dimensions. Man is a spirit. Yeah. Eh? that has a soul and lives in a body and the Bible said I wish above all things that you prosper the one I'm talking now yes. and be in health physically as your soul prospers so now when some countries they line up God, no room for spiritual. That is, they say, God, we don't want you in our country. Okay. Who, and you know that man can never stay without somebody. So if God is not there, devil steps in. So devil is the one moving in some places, giving them the kingdom of this world, whatever he want to give to you. And then at the end of the day, he will have their soul in hell. But, so, but we that are Christians, yeah. We focus on God. Okay. Eternal reality. Okay. You can take everything from us, believe God, believe God with us. Very soon, Africa will show the world that God is with them. Okay, sir. I, I see um, we can't exhaust these uh, uh, issues, but uh, one final question before I let you go. Now, uh, a, a lot of uh, sudden things happen in the church. Yes. Some people believe that... Um, 
uh, what is happening in the church presently we witness a situation of uh, people doing uh, fake miracles mm -hmm. juju induced miracles pastors sleeping with their members wives and um, uh, um, uh, uh, exploitation of members and uh, so many odd things happen that are not what one expects in the house of God mm -hmm. and then people are now talking about regulating the churches that churches should be regulated so that there should be sanity and then other persons hold the view that these things started coming up from the time Pentecostalism emerged in Nigeria courtesy of uh, the late Bishop Benson in Dahosa you know, he who pioneered uh, Pentecostal churches. So I, I don't know what, what are your thoughts. Do you think church should be regulated? Because there are a lot of evils happening in the church. Just do justice to that question and then we'll wrap it up, sir. Oh. Number one, I want to let you understand that uh, the as basically the host, sir, our uh, father, one of our fathers in faith. We cannot say precisely that he brought Pentecostalism to Nigeria. Pentecostalism have been there. Assemblies of God have been there. Other churches have been there. Okay, Assemblies of God is a Pentecostal church. Yes, pure one. A pure Pentecostal. That's there. Okay, it's just that... Yeah, but he popularized it at least. Not, not popularized it. Church is moving. He just did his own part of the work. But uh, let me talk about because when you say this is a common when uh, as you mentioned the whole has started he said are, are you insinuating that he's the one the father of fraud father of no, 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 father of it. But, uh, no I didn't say so he said this is a started the yeah, because that. initially the, the churches we used to have back then yes. they are very quiet the Anglican the method all this issue of miracle this uh, they were not happening they were not happening it's in the moment let, let me explain to you okay so look at it this way i don't want to get on the nerve of anybody okay god is on the move i give you it yeah and uh, uh we're not cascading any any group any group yeah. but the I issue agree. is that god is not a stagnant god his nature is the same but his program is progressive okay i give you it yeah. he's going somewhere and then uh, uh, at this time, it's just because it seems that the Pentecostals are allowed. Okay. Lord means what? Because they are preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they are moving. And now, like I said to you before, in the book of Jude, chapter 1, from verse 1 down, Jude said, I wanted to write to you people about the common salvation that we have in Christ. But I perceive that Something has gone wrong somewhere. It's a contempt for the faith that was once delivered to you. Why? It's a certain men have crept in on our ways. Okay. They are not part of us, but they crept in. Let me tell you something. Devil is not out there. Devil is inside. He, he, he is there to discredit the work of the Holy Spirit to discredit the work of realities because he's still fighting that's why jesus said the gates of fire shall not prevail so he goes with the propaganda he goes with blackmailing against the church try to paint the church black every little thing they will blow it online every little thing human beings are not perfect there are still bound to be mistakes. I don't want to call other other I don't want to call all that denominations. They have their own challenges. Okay, so, so, so we are battling with many people who are not God sent, who sneak in and do their own thing. But thank God when they say regulate, regulate what? Regulate. What are regulating? They don't regulate anything because the laws of Nigeria is there. If a pastor does what he's supposed not to do, the law will catch up with him. He will go answer the law. I get what I'm saying. If a pastor kills a person, the law is there. But you know that the way this thing goes, God is the one that calls us. Nobody calls anybody. So you cannot regret me, tell me what to do, what not to do. I get it. But the law of 
the law of Nigeria regulates everything. Now, for example, let me come back to come home like a PFN. Okay. Then the Coastal Federation of Nigeria is an organization. It has constitution. It has laws. It has do's and don't yeah. for the family, for the members. So if you are a member of PFN and you are caught stealing children, okay. what happened? Okay. We will disfellowship you. We will pay it because that's not what we taught you. Because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible is our standard. So at the end of the day, even men and women still attack the church. And because we cannot say because there's counterfeit, you say the read is, read is not there. The, I mean, the major thing is not there. Pentecostal Fresh for Nigeria is the light of Nigeria. Thank you so much, sir. So thank you for being part of our program. I appreciate Yeah. Viewers, uh, this is where we draw the curtain for the program. And uh, we've been hearing Bishop uh, C.D. Jacobs talk about uh, so many issues. He said that there is nothing to gain going back to the tradition. And he has told us that Christianity is not white man's religion. He moved on to talk about that there is no need to regulate the churches because the law is enough to take care of uh, every issue arising from the churches. On this note, we sign off and uh, request you to continue to stay with Universal Heritage Television Niger. My name again is Afam Echi. Thank you for being part of the program.